What is a lifting point? How do you choose the correct one? In this video, we walk you through what you need to know and what questions you need to ask so you can get a lifting point appropriate for your lifting application. A lifting point is what connects your load to your lifting gear. They can be pieces of equipment such as ring bolts, eye bolts, and flanges. Today, we're in Rockford, Illinois at Caldwell Lifting Solutions HQ. Regional sales manager Jay Schrader will show us some of the different types of lifting points from the Rudd product line and walk us through what you should know to select the correct point. So, let's get into it. So the first thing I ask is, uh, do we need to worry about bolt-on or is this gonna be a weld-on application? And how we choose the difference? Bolt-on is, do you have a hole that's already established or do you have an area that we can put a hole in and tap it? Um, or is this a through hole application? Something that is, is gonna be on there all the time or is it for a one-time lift? Um, a lot of times I'll get the answer, well, I really don't know. And so I say, well, do you have a hole there? Yes, what size hole do you have? And they tell me. Um, and then we start asking, well, what's the, what's the product weigh? Um, is this gonna be picked up by one point, two points, four points, how are we lifting this thing? At that point in time, we can start to kind of decipher down now that we're on the bolt-on side. If they say, no, it's a weld-on application, it's gonna stay on the equipment. Okay, great, so then I start asking a few questions as far as um, where and how and you know working loads, things like that. The one thing about the RUD lifting points is they're all working loads, limits are all based off worst case scenario. So even though that this fits in this M12 hole that's drilled here, doesn't necessarily mean that a lot of times the end user realizes what they're lifting. So we try to incorporate the safety into the lifting points right away from the beginning. As they are subjected to external heat, so whether it's a torch or a heat treat oven, um, something that's producing external heat around it, um, it's actually bringing it back into an annealed state. So this is gonna change colors. And as it starts to change colors, once it turns black, it's gonna be compromised by 25% and needs to be discarded. Now people say, well, if it's, if it's stretched or if it's overloaded, that produces heat. That's an instantaneous heat, it's not a sustained heat, so it won't change colors. That's only due to an external heat source. First one we'll talk about is the VRS, or what we call our star point. All products that we'll talk about today will be offered in inch, or imperial sizes, and metric sizes. It's got a captive bolt, so the bolt cannot come out. We use this, what we call our key. It's used just like an Allen wrench would be used. So we can put it in the head of the bolt. We can swivel, everything swivels in one piece. Take the key out. And now the ring will swivel outside of the bolt here and it will not back out. What's important about something like this is that if it's for a one-time lift, if we're just gonna lift the block and lift it straight up off the table, hand tight is good. Otherwise we do have torque values that we need to torque it down to in our safety instructions. If we were gonna use four of them to pick the table up or pick this block up here, they would all be bolted in separately. And then as you make your lift, they will all independently turn to the path least resistance for your top rigging and be able to make a safe lift. These are very popular in moving uh, motors, uh, gear boxes. A lot of times places where you only need one lifting point um, and not need four. We can use in conjunction with four, but a lot of times these are used in single point lifts. This here, uh, a lot of times we can use the swivel eye bolt for reasons, uh, if they just need a swivel or if it's just to replace a shouldered eye bolt. To remove, you would put the key back in and spin them out. So we offered as an inch and uh, metric sizes up to M48. The next one we'll talk about is our VLBG, VLBG Plus. The VLBG is the Imperial inch sizes. The VLBG Plus is the metric sizes. The difference is the metric size use our uh, ice bolt, and this is a proprietary uh, material, and it's a little bit harder than the 12.9 that we use in our inch bolts. Again, the, the bolt is captive, but we can replace the bolt with a longer bolt, or if the bolt gets damaged, we can replace it with the same one. We would screw down into the block. This would require a torque wrench to get to the torque value. And then again, this here will, if this is properly torqued, this here will spin independent of the bolt. And then when you're done, you can lay it over for low profile if you want. Um, advantage to this is that it's always gonna swivel out to the side. Disadvantage would be if you're only making a, a single lift with or single picking point with this, it's gonna lift a little bit off center. So it's not a true over to center lift. This here is more of a side. Um, so we like to use these and using it at least pairs or if not all four lifting points at one time with these. One advantage of these two is there's little dimples around here. These are wear marks. 
if they are compromised, so that's a 10% reduction of those wear marks. Once you can no longer feel them, then you need to replace your lifting point. The next one we'll talk about is our VWBG. This has ball bearings on the inside. We would use the VWBG for when you're swiveling under load and because it's got ball bearings in it, it will not back out. So how we would apply this, we would screw it in. Again, we would use a torque wrench to torque down to our settings and then we can make our lift. We can use these singles, doubles, or use four lifting points at one time. And then again, the ring is gonna rotate outside of the bolt. The advantage of this, it is over center, so we can lift truly over center, so we can use one piece if we're lifting just one. This product line right here, the VWBG, has the largest range of working load limits, so we can five inch to M90, M100 size bolts, so we have the largest uh, working load range with this uh, particular series of lifting points. The last bolt-on product we'll talk about is the ACP. This is our only product that meets all ASME B30.26 uh, requirements. Uh, the other ones all are made to a DEN standard, which is made in, which is a German manufacturing standard. Um, the reason they don't make it is because the torque value is not on the bolt and also the working load limit is four to one and not five to one. So on the ACP, we list five to one and we also have the torque value on the bolt. Again, we would screw it in. The advantage of this right here is, is on a side lift, if we were gonna make a side lift here, this can never get truly over center. And what happens sometimes when you make a lift over center with a center pole hoist ring, it can get bound in this position. And then when it does break free, you shock load the crane. So this one here can never get over. So no matter how we load this thing, if we put the hook right here, it's always gonna rotate to the path of least resistance. So you'll never get this load ring in a bound situation. All of these products come with an RFID chip and it's a 16 alph alphanumeric uh, code that you can uh, use for inspection purposes, any kind of tracking purposes within your facilities. And that talks about the four main bolt-on rud products. Now we'll talk about the weld-on products. The first one we'll talk about is our ABA. This here is a very easy to weld on. It's a very uh, universal lifting and lashing point. Um, it's got a nice beveled edge to leave a nice uh, chamfer uh, for easy welding. We got one welded on the block here to kind of show you. It can be loaded and lift from any direction. So we can even, uh, worst case scenario, be pulling back against me here, it can still be loaded from that. We offer this up to 31 and a half tons. The next one we'll talk about is our VLBS. The VLBS, the advantage of this is that it's got a spring in here and it actually retains that upright. So you can do one-handed welding. So we can run across here. Then we'll be able to run across here. It's actually got two little feet on here, or four little feet. Um, it's single-handed welding, so you'll be able to have it standing up. We'd be able to weld across here and it's not going to fall down. The other advantage is, is when there's no load on it, you can fold it down and it's out of the way. So if you're working on this back side or you're working on the front side, it's out of the way here for you. Um, again, we can offer this up to uh, 16 tons um, and that's metric tons uh, for that. Worst case scenario is how, how we rate these. Um, once they're welded on, they become part of the equipment. So they no longer become a lifting point considered by us where they can be taken off. Once they've been welded on, they become part of that, that equipment. Also, whenever you're making your lift, if it's in this position, it's a one-handed lift. You're not worried about trying to get your fingers in here, getting your hand in here and getting it pinched. If you want more information or you're looking for some help planning a lift, then you can contact Caldwell or Mozilla's Lifting and Rigging Division. The links are in the description below. If you think we missed something or you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and Jay or I will find you an answer. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. My name is Ben and I'll see you in the next one.